What is up folks? So today's video, we're gonna be working on Dodge Dakota. I'm inside right now, so let's go outside. And let me show you guys what's going on. So Dodge Dakota RT right there, supercharged, pro charge, whatever. And here we go. So I need to go get one of these belts. And if you guys are familiar with belts, they usually tell you what the length is right on it. So this thing is insanely big. So I'm gonna go over to just a local AutoZone, see if I can find one of these things. It's seven rib, but this one is just old and weathered. And if you guys watched the last video, we were having some belt slippage. So I'm gonna go see if we can pick one of these up just from our local AutoZone and see if they have one. If not, then we'll go back and order one online. But I'll see if I can find one of these so we can get this thing back in order. And we'll see what else we get into today. I also wanna do some other stuff maybe with you guys too is we're gonna be installing that intercooler on the front and I still need to order some piping. So I don't wanna cut up our factory Pro Charger piping, but we're gonna to have to come out through here or we'll remove all this and we're gonna to have to come in through there and then remove this bottle and go back that way. So I don't know and I don't think that I'll be able to utilize the piping that we have and I don't wanna cut this stuff. So I'll probably be ordering some piping with you guys as well so that we can get that stuff coming and we can hopefully mount the front mount and all that stuff. Not today, but just upcoming here uh, once we get this thing a little bit more dialed in. So anyways, let's jump in the car and uh, we'll go get that belt hopefully. Okay, so we're outside now. Also, it is a beautiful day today. So we'll just jump in the Jetta. We'll take that over and let's get going. So hopefully if all goes as planned in this video, we'll end up making our you know seven eight pounds of boost and we can really start to get serious about stuff so not that we're not right now but um i just want to end up getting things at least situated and we can start putting the intercooler on all right guys so we're here at AutoZone. let's go see if they have that belt okay so we're back from AutoZone, and almost to be expected but unless you give those guys a part number they do not know anything so they can't seem to do anything with you know, if I tell them it's a seven rib belt and I need it so many inches long, they're just looking at me like I'm crazy. So um, they kept shaking their head saying they don't have it. They can't even look anything up. They couldn't do anything for me. So not exactly too pleased with AutoZone right now, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and head over to an O'Reilly's, which I could see just across there. And we'll see if they can be a bit more helpful. If not, it's, I'm gonna have to order it online. So I know how to order it online, but I was hoping I could get it today. So it's kind of where we're at. Let's head over to O'Reilly's, see if we can do anything better there. If not, we'll go back, jump on the computer and order it online. All right, here we go to the infamous o o o O'Reilly's. So let's see what they have to say. Okay guys, same deal. Wasn't successful there. They were definitely more helpful. She actually went in the back and went to find um, a belt or try to find a belt. But this one's almost 120 inches long. It's 119 and three quarters. So pretty much 120 inches long, if you can believe it. And the closest or biggest one she had was like, I think 101 inches. So almost 20 inches short. Not gonna work. Um, so I actually found it on Amazon. Let me start this car. I found it on Amazon for $22 and it would be here in two days. So I'm gonna go take a look. Um, I try, I kind of want to find one just a tiny bit shorter because we were kind of on the, the further end of our adjustment. So I want to see if I can find one just a little bit shorter, maybe an inch shorter would be good. And uh, we'll order it online. Let's go back. All right, so we're back. So we'll go inside and see if we can order it. Also, they wanted like $38 for this belt at O'Reilly's. I've already seen it on Amazon for $22 with shipping. So um, just if you guys ever end up in this pickle, maybe get it online. All right, guys, so just in front of the computer and let me show you guys what's going down. So there's not too much in the way of belts. So I kind of just pulled up everything that was available. So we've got this brand, whatever the heck that is, Bando. I've never really heard of it, but uh, I don't know if I trust that one. And some of them are measured in millimeters instead of inches. So seven PK, 30, 35 is the length of the belt in millimeters. So you can see they have the corresponding part numbers. So uh, a lot of them, you know, seven, one, one, nine, four. So the 119, 0.4 inches that's that it equates to their 30 35 millimeters so there's that one and you guys can see the struggle since 
uh, AutoZone or any of those places didn't have it in stock, but either way they wanted like 30 bucks or something or almost 40 for some of these belts. So 27, 31 in free shipping, or we go over to the Gates, which is pretty much the one we're gonna go with. Look at that, $22.14, which we can live with, and it'll arrive on Thursday. So this is the way they use the belt, uh, the part number, like I was saying. So seven ribs, 119 inches, 0.4. So this is the belt that's on our floor right there. So we'll probably just go with this one, but I still did more research. And I think there was the last one. The last one I found was this Deco. So same thing, a little bit bigger, I guess, right? So seven ribs, 119.5 inches. This is 20 bucks, which is a Deco belt, but uh, ETA isn't, uh, isn't looking too good. So anyways, we're gonna go ahead and just order this one for now. So we'll order this one, where is it? Order this one off of Amazon, $22.14 and it'll be here on Thursday. All right, so next topic or item that we need is that intercooler piping. So I mentioned to you guys, we we're just gonna get a cheap intercooler piping online so that we don't have to hack up our Pro Charger intercooler piping. So this is what we got. So same deal, I'm just looking again and so you guys kind of understand how I price stuff and keep things you know, budget oriented and still you know, manage to afford all this stuff. So what I did was I just searched three inch intercooler piping kit at the top and then I sorted it price plus shipping lowest first. So what we are gonna go with is this one here. So 80 bucks with shipping, that gets us a bunch of black intercooler piping. Uh, looks like six couplings and a bunch of uh, actually T bolts or uh, let's see. Yeah, it has the, the nicer clamps too, like you can see. So it's got the T bolt style clamp and it's got a bunch of, I think it's three ply couplings. So that should do it for what we need. And it'll also be black to match our intercooler. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick this up. And not only that, but uh, I'm gonna apply this $5 coupon as well. So it'll take it down to 75 bucks shipped. So not bad, we're gonna get that as well. All right guys, so we have the intercooler piping on order. We also have that belt on order. So there's something else that um, I was just messing with right now and they get you guys up to speed on it. So if you guys know, I had a battery drain issue and I was wondering what it was for a little while. So uh, when I first bought the truck, it didn't have a battery drain issue, but uh, you know, kind of after getting the truck sorted out itself, this thing was a wiring nightmare. If you guys go back into the videos, you'll see just how much wiring nonsense we had to rip out of the truck. All sorts of old stereo junk, uh, aftermarket amplifiers, uh, old alarm systems, all just a rat's nest. We got rid of it all, but I was having an issue with, if I didn't drive it for like a week or two, the battery would drain down quite a bit. So when I went to go get the SRT10 and the truck was sitting here for like two weeks, when I got back, the battery was like dead as a doorknob. So I had to go and buy a new battery, which has a brand new interstate battery in it, but it still was dying. So long story short, I just put a multimeter on it right now and I can probably do a separate video. Let me know if you guys want me to do a completely separate video going step by step, but um, I'll just run through it with you guys here. So I have the multimeter set to ohms. So right now it's set to 10 amps and this is what will measure a draw. So I have the multimeter set up there and you can see that it's showing about 49, so 0.49. And that is with the terminal off. So you can see I have the red terminal off. And what I essentially have is, obviously you can see my battery terminal is off and I have the meter in loop between the terminal and the battery post. So between these two, the meter is sitting in the middle and it's measuring what kind of current draw is coming off the battery to the truck itself. So what I ended up doing was I just checked a few things. First and foremost, we put an electric fan on here with a relay kit. So obviously just that was my first thing to go to. I pulled the fuse on our relay kit, which you can see here. And when I pull that fuse, that number does not change. So the draw still wasn't changing. So I went through a few other things and I'm happy to say that I found what it is. Um, I'm gonna have to figure out how to fix it necessarily, but what it is, is if you see over here, and these are the fuses, if I pull out the fuse for the factory power amp, 
you will see that number drop down. So I can kind of see through here what number that's displaying. So you guys remember it's about 49. I don't know if you can see from here, but when I removed the fuse for our factory power amp, again, the truck is completely off. Pull that fuse. We go back over to our multimeter. And you can see now we're at 0 0.08, which is acceptable for a truck that's fully completely off. So what is happening or was happening, still happening because I haven't fixed it yet, is the power amp that's in this truck. I think it's infinity system, um, but it has that amp in there. And with that aftermarket stereo, it is not turning off the factory amp. So that amp is essentially just sitting there on the whole time. And that's what's killing the battery. So what I'm gonna do is, I think I'm going to take out the dash bezel and see what way I wired it. Because I remember I had to wire it so the factory amp would come on, but obviously it's not turning off. So I'm just gonna check that right now. Um, there's actually a kit that I should probably order, which bypasses that factory amp and just, it's a plug and play kit that just passes it through. So that's probably the better route to go, but for now, I guess I might as well just check and see what the deal is, but I'm kind of happy that I'm getting to the bottom of this. Let me rip off that dash and see if I can figure out how I wired it and we can fix it. Okay guys, so I just double checked my wiring. I even unplugged the harness. So what I did was I have, this one here is the blue with the white stripe is a remote. So this is something that you turn on an amplifier with, whether it's a factory one or not. And that goes into this wire. And I completely disconnected this from the harness. I actually disconnected both the ones from the stereo. So it's just dangling. So it's not that I wired it up wrong. It's literally just that there's something wrong with that amp, that amp is just, causing a battery drain. So I double checked and I think this is gonna be our easiest solution. And honestly, bypassing that amp, these newer head units are all like 50 watts times four, which is a lot more than those old amps put out. So I'm just gonna get this off eBay. Look, it's 8.95 and it comes with these two bypass clips so we don't have to hack up any wiring. We just put these, plug these two in. It actually comes with the whole thing, like even the ones for the stereo there but it comes with those two bypasses. We'll just click those in. I can remove that stupid amp over there that's causing our battery drain, but for now, I'll just keep the fuse off. I think that's the easiest way rather than mucking with all this stuff. And there seems to be a reason why that's causing a drain. So we'll just bypass the whole thing and then we don't need that amp over there. And that'll be the end of that nonsense. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get this. So with that being said, we might as well put our stereo back in so that we're all back together. I just wanted to double check my wiring, but um, my wiring was okay, so I'm gonna put this back in, put our dash back together. And just so you guys know what the heck I'm talking about on these two white clips here, this is the factory amp down here, and I just unplugged the two wires that come out of it. And what these are gonna do is, these are all of our speaker wires, it's just gonna put a jumper, it's literally those little loops. And they plug into here, which is our factory wiring harness. We don't have to cut all this stuff. And it just jumpers all this so that our wires continue from our head unit to our speakers and bypasses the amp that's sitting here, this box. So that's that, I'm gonna order that. Let's move on to something else. So we are just tackling everything today. So I removed the bypass valve from in there. And this is essentially what it is. It just has this little diaphragm. The vacuum line hooks up to there and it, it pulls up this mechanism like you see there and opens up that valve. That's all it does. But even though it seems fairly simple, these things are pretty prone to failure. So I don't know, for some reason, this thing just seems to stay open the whole time. It doesn't want to close. So that's a, another big portion of our boost leak. So I went ahead and ordered a couple more things. I'm gonna go with the tile. 50 mil blow off valve, same as we did with the pro charger setup. It's a little bit noisy, but whatever, it's not, we're not trying to make this vehicle comfort, but it's very effective and works really well. So um, this one is gonna come out for now, I think, because I can't guarantee that it works. There is a screw on the top that you see here that adjusts it so that it can work better, but 
I know Procharger came up with an updated version. This is not it. This is an older one. So it wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised if this is actually causing a huge boost leak. It was leaking a ton of air just on idle, which it should do, but I never have really heard it seal up either. So anyways, this is off. Let's move on to the next thing. So one more thing is I'm going to get into a specific video on this SRT 10, but it has these air ducts back here, like you can see that block the grill and they're held on with an eight mil and then these big Christmas tree push pins there. So I'm going to take this off because I do want to assess this grill. So the grill inserts on this truck are actually a little bit easier to come out than most people think. And also than a fourth gen, it's these little pins here that actually have these little pins that you push the center of them out, the center pushes in and then it kind of falls out the back and then we can take these clips out. So I just want to see how that works and then I'll make a full video on, on it after, but I also want to take these off and just kind of clean them up too because the inside of them is a little bit, I don't know if you can see that, but it's a little bit grayish. So I do want to plastic dip those black, just freshen them up a little bit. So let me remove these eight mil screws and we'll take off these kind of uh, air ducts here. All right, so once you remove those two screws there, those eight mil heads, we have a Christmas tree style clip there, same one over here. And there was one here, I don't know if you guys saw me try to remove it, but it came off like a rocket ship and I think it landed in Mexico, so it's gone. But here is the actual head of it, I found it, but that's what it is, it was just, super brittle and wanted to come off. So as far as what I'm trying to do, this is what I was mentioning. See how you can see it's really gray, the discoloration right there. And it's supposed to be black. So that's why I'm removing it. And then ultimately I'm gonna remove these grills. So like I said, I'll just play with one for now. It also has a zip tie from the factory that you can probably see there. It has them on both sides. So I'm gonna remove these two last Christmas trees so I can pull this thing down. There she is on the ground and you can probably tell just how gray that thing is like I was mentioning. So I'm gonna make this black eventually, but for now we'll keep it off. Let's take off the other one. All right, so now that those two are off, I can kind of illustrate what goes on here. So you guys can see this. So I just pushed on the very center there. So see how that is pushing in. So you just push that pin out the back and that relieves the pin or the clip so it spreads out and as you push that pin in it retracts so that you can actually get this out so let's do it so i'm using a tiny little screwdriver to just push that pin out the back and you don't want to wreck these clips because they're actually kind of expensive believe it or not so we're going to tap out this little pin out the back and then we can reinsert it from the front afterwards there we go so here is the little tiny plastic pin that you push out I just used a little screwdriver that I got from like an iPhone kit to look kind of like replace your battery or something like that. And that seemed to be the perfect size to push that out. And then we can use our flat or something of that nature to pry out the actual clip without destroying it. All right, so there you see, there's the clip. And now this is saved and we've got one off. There's a lot to go, but that's how you remove it without wrecking it. All right, so kind of cool that you can take those apart. Those are the two pieces of that clip and I'm gonna do a full video on that. I just wanna see how it came apart. Maybe you guys are interested too. And it's nice that you can actually replace the inserts. So comment down below. Do you guys wanna see me paint those inserts black, like plastic dip them? Cause I was gonna remove them, plastic dip them black, or I was gonna go ahead and just order the black honeycomb ones, which would match what we already have down here. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Make sure you leave a comment and let me know whether you think we should black plastic dip these chrome slats or just go ahead and order the black honeycomb ones and put them in there. So uh, I'll make a full video on replacing those and removing those. But anyways, that's gonna be it for today's video, you guys. So I ordered a bunch of stuff, a bunch of stuff's on the go coming here. So. Uh, we should be pretty, uh, in pretty good shape here shortly. So I'm just gonna wait for that stuff to show up. So here is what the plan is in case you guys are wondering. So once that uh, blow off valve shows up and all that, we will get this thing testing and also that belt. So that should fix our boost leak issues. So between the belt slipping and that different blow off valve, that should be the end of it. There's not really anything else that could be leaking boost. And that should get us back where we need to be. Once we start making boost, then that gives me the green light and thumbs up 
to go ahead and rip everything back apart, take off that intercooler off the bottom and put that Mishimoto one that we have on the front and plumb all that up. And at the same time too, at that point, we should have our piping, the three inch intercooler piping that I ordered, that should be showing up. So lots on the way you guys, and I'm gonna start ordering some stuff for this too. So, um, but let me know whether I should be going and ordering those honeycomb inserts for this thing. Also, if you guys want Boosted Motorsports uh, stickers, they're $5 shipped each. I have a bunch of different colors, so make sure you hit me up, either DM me or get a hold of me somehow. You can email me and get yourself a Boosted Motorsports sticker. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, you guys. A lot of big things happening and we got a lot on the way. So don't go anywhere. We'll see you on the next video. Take care.